So recently I received a lot of feedback of people complaining about the use of Substance Designer inside my project for several reasons. Reasons like it's not free, it requires an expensive subscription that might not worth it, especially if you don't use the software on a regular basis. So I decided that the next project that I will create must meet this one condition. Everything will be done in Blender alone, so no external texturing software will be used. So after browsing the web for some references, I found some interesting Japanese streets and I simply jump on it. So as you know, scale matching and modeling can be done easily in Blender, also with the help of some uh, already built-in plugins like Orky Mesh that allows you to spawn windows immediately without the need for spending hours modeling them. Same thing for the trees, you can use a sapling gen tree plugin that allows you to create almost any shape of trees that you want. So basically you can activate these plugins and you're good to go. But the real challenge is texturing. So as you can see in this scene, we have a variety of textures. We have for example, the ground with water puddles on it. We have some concrete material. We have some painted walls. We have uh, tiles, tiles over here and tiles on the building on the back. Also we have other textures like garage and metal and other materials. So so how can we generate realistic textures in Blender without relying on any pre-made textures or any texturing softwares? So the key of course is procedural generated texturing. So I started experimenting with it and I got some interesting nice results. So my first material was the asphalt. I took a new reference on that so that I can understand the shape and the, the nature of that material. And after that I mixed a Vernoy texture with some noisy details and basically this is what I got. It looks pretty much close to the reference. And after that, I scaled up our texture and add some water puddles on it so that we can make it look uh, exactly the same as our reference. So I did the same thing for the concrete and the painted walls. For the tiles over here, I used the brick node and set the bias to 0.5 so that we can get these nice color random variations. For this garage over here, I used the wave texture, spin it by 45 and mix it with another wave texture. And after that, I've added some dirt to it. And finally, the lighting. So for the lighting, I've put some lamps in my scene and with the help of the glare and the color balance in the composition mode, I was able to achieve the same pink feeling that we have in our reference. And basically, there we go. So this is the final result. We can definitely add more details to it to make it even more cooler and even more realistic. But as a starting point, it looks pretty decent. So in the next coming tutorials, I'm actually planning to share the entire process, everything that I learned to achieve this final results. I've also created the long-term format tutorials. You can watch them for free on my website, realityfakers.net, to get a step-by-step -step guide that takes you from this starting point to the final outcome. So please, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing. So thanks a lot for watching and stay tuned for the coming tutorials. See you then.